But let's welcome in our powerhouse panel. We start with the co-host of Wake Up America Weekend, the Allison Maloney, and political analyst Mark Halperin and National Advisor uh, Advisory Board of Project 21, Christopher Arps. Uh, morning to all you folks. So Anthony Fauci is on Capitol Hill yesterday and again got into this spat with Kentucky Senator Rand Paul over the gain of function research. Why don't you guys take a listen to this? Will you today finally take some responsibility for funding gain of function research in Wuhan? Senator, with all due respect, I disagree with so many of the things that you've said. This is terrible, and you're, you're completely trying to escape right. the idea that we should do something about trying to prevent a pandemic from leaking from a lab. There's, the preponderance of evidence now points towards this coming from the lab, and what you've done is change the definition right. on your website to try to cover your ass. He is egregiously incorrect in what he says. Thank you. Thank History you. will figure that out. I love the back and forth. They were trying to, uh, you know, trying to get him off the uh, off the airwaves as, as much as they could, and try to give uh, Dr. Fauci cover to try to respond without um, Senator Rand Paul. But Allison, when you see stuff like this, I mean, who won that exchange from just a public PR standpoint? Yeah, Senator Rand Paul, and he wins all the time. Although I will say, it depends on. I say this all the time: which media outlet you're watching. So if you're watching CNN or other media outlets, Dr. Fauci, he's the victim in this. They're attacking him. He had nothing to do with it. He'll be on all the Sunday shows talking. But, I mean, look, he, as Senator Rand Paul mentioned, they took, they, they changed the verbiage, right? right? It's not gain of function anymore. And they did that around the same time that all this information came out that they basically said, well, yeah, there was, some, you know, some gain of function. There was some funding that went to the Wuhan lab. Again, uh, you know, it's just it depends on what media outlet you're watching. Yeah. Mark, this is a guy, though, who survived under Trump. I mean, he survived basically being the guy who went with the flavor of the day. He survived under Biden and he's really doesn't have a lot to go, a lot to stand on because he's flip flopped on everything. So politically, it, it, when does it become expedient for whatever administration happens to have him at the time? He's like a hot potato. When does it become politically expedient to get him out of there? Doesn't seem like he wants to go. He's been in the job a while, seems to like it. I'd say he and mm -hmm. Senator Paul, whatever the opposite of get a room is, maybe get a boxing ring uh, and take it outside because <laughs> those guys uh, those guys have one of the longest running dramas on TV at this point. Yeah. Hey, hey, sir, I want to ask you, you know, on, on this. At the same time, when you have uh, a number of people very, very, very tired of the of the COVID push, the COVID restrictions, uh, cases are coming down. We've seen Florida has is now the lowest per capita in the nation, despite being wide open. At what point do you say, OK, you're you're dragging this out for your own political career and to try to save face? Mr. Ark. Is that, oh, that's for me. Oh, yeah. I think if you see, you know, nationwide and, and across the world, um, cases are going down here in Missouri. Um, we have one of the lowest uh, infection rates. I think Americans are getting tired of, of, these, of these mandates because I think by and by the pandemic has passed us by. And I think that we need to just start living our lives. And I think Americans are, are starting to do that. Yeah. And, and just like that, Paul, uh, Senator Paul said that Dr. Fauci is trying to cover it up. So I'm going to take a look at this, Allison. The preponderance of evidence now points towards this coming from the lab, and what you've done is changed the definition right. on your website to try to cover your ass, basically. That's what you've done. You've changed the website right. to try to have a new definition that doesn't include the risky research that's going on. Until you admit that it's risky, we're not going to get anywhere. And Allison, to that point, we've seen this before with other words when, when uh, mm. the, the Merriam-Webster has actually changed digital definitions on their website to fit new woke culture and things like that. Are people seeing right through this? I think they are, Carl. I mean, look, you change the verbiage on the website all of a sudden, and it's been there for how long? I mean, it, that essentially is a cover-up, right? Oh, we're going to just, well, it means the same thing, but it's a different verbiage. It's all about the narrative. And uh, people are seeing right through it. There's there's no, you know, and as Christopher said, people are tired. They're tired of being lied to. They're tired of listening to politicians tell them what they should and shouldn't do. And people are getting fed up. Yeah. And Mark, I mean, look, your, your show, Focus Group, focuses on what people think. So at what point, I mean, do you think there's any trust left in Fauci at all? Is it worth keeping him around? What do you think? I mean, he has his constituency, and that includes the president. So I really, I, you know, I, Rob Finnerty will be delighted if I turn out to be wrong, but I just don't <laughs> see him going anywhere. This is, the, this is the job he loves. Joe Biden doesn't like to fire anybody at any time. Look at his career. 
And for for Blue America, Fauci's still a hero, largely. Yeah, he's just, yeah. Go ahead, Alex. He's not going to resign. He's not going to resign. There's no way he's going to resign. Right. And, and Chris, I want to get and you to weigh in here real quick. Mm. Definition change from gain of function to they changed it to enhanced potential pandemic pathogen, which <laughs> means to me the <laughs> gain of function meant that you were intentionally trying to create a virus. This other definition that they're giving, well, if you experiment with this and it ends up being deadly, well, it happened, but we didn't try to do it intentionally. Yeah. That seems to be the difference in the definitions. Yeah. Well, speaking of defining things, one of the things that defined the Virginia election was this critical race theory, okay? This was something that parents were super annoyed about, and it turned out they showed up at the ballot box. Well, Dep Deputy Press Secretary uh, Jean, uh, Jean Pierre uh, says that Republicans are lying when it comes to teaching critical race theory. Just listen to this. That politicians should be dict dictating, should not be uh, dictating what our kids are being taught. But we also need to be honest here uh, about what's going on here. Republicans are lying. They're not being honest. They're not being truthful about where we stand. And they're, and they're cynically trying to use our kids as a political football. Well, Chris, I want to ask you first on this. This is a, a real problem when she outright says Republicans are lying, but a a D plus 10 for Biden state just went red. So is it Republicans that have the problem? It's not to have the problem. And if you do, remember during this Virginia governor's race, uh, Terry McAuliffe emphatically said that they're not teaching T uh, in the Virginia. If anyone looks up a definition of CRT and what it does, you can see how detrimental it is to our kids and to our nation. Uh, I've seen an example of CRT where they're trying to teach uh, African-American students to to uh, prize uh, Angela Davis, who was a cop. I've seen CRT materials where they where they want children not to call their parents. I mean, this is a dangerous and as we've seen, Garrick, Garrick uh, Marlin's uh, son-in-law, the attorney general, is making millions of dollars selling mm -hmm. this dangerous curriculum to schools. Yeah. Mark? I think the, the left looks at Virginia and thinks this was some strange wedge issue, some right-wing uh, gambit. This appealed to, as an issue, not just critical race theory, but education, uh, control, standards, uh, and uh, safety uh, across the country. Right. And if Democrats don't figure that out, if they continue to think this is some right wing wage issue, they'll lose the midterms worse than they lost on Tuesday. Yeah. Allison, real quick. I mean, we're both parents. We get this. Like, I've been very vocal at my school boards recently. Yeah. But I mean, look, I want every kid to grow up thinking that they're all equal and that they all have the equal chance to succeed in this world. I mean, when someone tells you or your kids that they are good or bad based on the color of their skin, I mean, does that is that an environment you want your kids being brought up in? No, and that's not what a lot of parents want their kids being brought up in. And we saw that what happened in Virginia. You know, parents are seeing what's happening in their classrooms since COVID, uh, which is a great thing for us to see what's being taught. And when we ask what's being taught and they don't want to tell us and, uh, you know, there's, there's issues, we just want our kids to learn history. We want mm -hmm. them to learn the right history, the, the true history. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're, this is the only thing I have to say is that Republicans are lying. They have nothing else to go on. Yeah, I mean, it, it just seems like the talking point. Every time they say that you're lying, it feels like you're hovering right over the target. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to thank you to our panel. We'll see you at the top of the hour.